Hey everyone, how are you going? And this is my advanced GIS tutorials. So in my first tutorial, I want to be going through the model builder. But first, let's just set up our page. Um, so assuming that we can uh, open up an MXD file, which is essentially it's just like a map with uh, geo data on it, that type of stuff. Assuming, assuming that you can do that, you can then move ahead into using Arc Catalog, which essentially allows ArcMap or Arc Catalog, um, ArcGIS any of these programs um, to find where your data is. So in order to do that, you just have to press the Arc Catalog or just the Catalog button up here. Um, you can also play do help find or something like that if you can't find it. And then you can see it'll be pinned to the side if it isn't already. If it isn't, then you can just hit the pin icon in order to do that. So let me just pin it. There you go, it's down here. Great. Now all that you have to do is just hit the uh, connect to folder here and then you just want to find the folder where all your MXD files and um, databases are and all that. Great, so that's how you do that. Now there's one other thing that we have to be doing. Um, we have to bring in our model builder, uh, but we have to set some other things first. So let's uh, open up our toolbox, so you just click uh, toolbox here and it'll open it up. And then just right click anywhere and then go into environments. And here we're just going to set up our workspace. So if you just um, click on the workspace button, you can select your current workspace, which is the um, uh, Geo database, which I'll be using. So it's this one for me, .gdb. Add. And then you also just want to create a temporary um, scratch workspace, which is essentially like where your output files will be going into. So, yep, let's just do that. I'll just call it temp, add, and then it's all set. Great. And you also want to go up to geoprocessing. Sorry, geoprocessing. And then you can just go down straight to uh, geoprocessing. Geoprocessing, and then we're going to get that right. Options. And then you just want to make sure that the overwrite the outputs of geoprocessing operations box is ticked. This means that your outputs will always. Um, go over and delete the previous version in case you had a previous version. If this isn't ticked, then you'll get lots of new copies of the same thing if you output the same thing multiple times. Great. So now we have that. Um, and now what I want to do is I have my map, right? I have two layers on it. I have proposed roads and vegetation types. And what I want to do is I want to buffer my proposed roads to see what vegetation areas are affected. So in order to do this, I just have to either make or bring in a model builder. So if you want to make one, you just go up here to model builder and then you can make a new one. Um, I have already made one in a toolbox, which I made. So if you right click anywhere in our toolbox, you can go to add toolbox if you've already made it previously. Um, and then you can just go ahead and uh, find it. So once it's been imported, then I can go into the model, which I built previously. So I can just go ahead and open that up. Uh, sorry, you don't want to do that. You want to right click it, then go into edit, sorry. And now you can see it right here. And so each one of these, I uh, might actually just have to zoom in a bit. There you go. Let me just use the pan tool as well and resize this a bit better. There. So um, how you use the model builder is essentially the exact same as using the Arc Toolbox. But uh, the model builder, unlike the Arc Toolbox, however, isn't any single tool. Um, so instead of using, for example, uh, overlay, instead of using just like the intersect tool, um, you can put in a tool which will appear as yellow when it's active, um, and then you can use it to produce an output which will produce which will appear as green, and then you can use that to use another tool and then do further and further um, things to it. So if I just use the tool outright, um, then I would produce an output layer, but you might forget what that output layer is if you don't name it correctly, which you should be doing. Um, so the model builder allows you to see everything that's happened to a layer um, over the course of its life or something like that, you can call it. So all you have to do to um, use the model builder is just open it up as I show using that um, button right there. And then you can pull in any tool um, that you could possibly think of. Um, so I'm gonna pull in the intersect tool. You just drag and drop, so hold down left click drag and drop. There you go, you can see it's been put straight in. And then you can go ahead and resize it or whatever it is that you want to do as well. And you can move it around. And the arrow shows you um, what this tool will produce as an output. So this is an output. And you'll notice that this is black and white, unlike these top ones, which are in color. 
That's because the black and white ones indicate that there is no input and therefore it will not run if you were to um, play it. And there are two ways to um, uh, run this model. Um, so I'm going I'm to produce a new output layer. Um, this one will be roads buffer. I'm just going to do just this top row and forget about everything else. Um, so there are two ways to do this. You can either, if you haven't done everything, which you maybe shouldn't be doing, um, you should do it really one step at a time. Uh, but if you do want to do it all at once, you just go up to model, then you just do run entire model. Great. And uh, just some housekeeping stuff to work it out. Um, here is the pan tool, which allows you to move around. Uh, this is the full extent tool, which shows you all um, tools and inputs and outputs, everything on screen so that you can see it all. And then you also have fixed zoom in, which goes in uh, ins and outs at like um, predefined quantities, I suppose you'd call it. And if you want to do any sort of edits to any of this type of stuff, um, you wouldn't need to edit the inputs very much. You would just do that in like by right clicking and then go to attribute open attribute table, then doing something to it. Um, but if I want to add, edit the tool to um, produce an output of some manner, I could just go ahead and right click the buffer tool, for example. Uh, then I go down to, uh, I think it's properties, is it? No, it's not properties, it's um, make variable, blah, 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 blah. Oh, and you can just double click on it, there you go. Yeah, so just double click on it, and then you can open the show help button and then it'll give you a description of every single line um, in order to use this tool properly. So as soon as you open the tool, the first help you'll have is what the tool actually does. For example, this is the buffer tool. It has three, uh, sorry, uh, it can have any number of point inputs uh, or also line inputs, which it doesn't explain here, um, around input features. It just says input features, so points or lines. Um, I think polygons, polygons also as well. And then you can create two types of outputs. One is the dissolve type none and dissolve type all. So the none is where, for example, a bunch of points will produce a buffer around them in non-connected groups. Whereas if you select the dissolve type to all, all buffers will be connected into one. And so if you click on any single line, you'll notice that the help uh, help bar, help location, will change depending on how best to um, help you uh, setting setting some parameter or something like that. Hey guys, and sorry about that. I just found out that I was in the wrong model builder, um, so I brought up the right one, which I got here. Um, so this one will actually work now. Um, I should also say one other thing just before I run it, and that's if, if, if you're trying to look through all the arc tool boxes for that one tool that you're trying to look for, let's just say you're trying to find the buffer tool, um, well, you can open the search panel and then you can just go ahead and type whatever it is that you're looking for in without having to search for it again. Uh, that's three Fs, that's why. Two Fs, if you just go ahead and search that. Um, I can find, for example, the buffer analysis tool and then I can just go to right click and then locate in catalog. And then you can find exactly where that tool is. So then I can just drag and drop and bring it in if I wanted to do that. But I'm not going to, so I can just go ahead and delete these. Great. So now I have my model builder. So let's just go ahead and run this. So again, uh, run entire model, or you can right click this, uh, the tool that I'm talking about, and then go ahead and run that. Great, so the buffer tool has been run, and now we can um, show our output, which has actually been made. So if we just do right click, then add to display, uh, we can show our new, um, our new outputted layer, whatever it may be. Great. Now, um, if we wanted to, we could just as easily um, use the clip on vegetation and the buffer zones as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Let me just move this. There you go. I can go ahead and do that on the clip. So if I just do run on that, that has now also um, been made as well. And it's already been added to display. But I could also just right click and turn it off if I didn't want to see it or something like that. But yeah, that is how you use the model builder in GIS. And this is a far better method uh, rather than using the arc tool boxes individually to create individual layers. And now what I want to do is I want to be selecting, say, um, certain vegetation types, not all vegetation types, just certain ones. Um, around those roads in those buffer zones. So I'm just go up to the selection tab and then go to 
um, select by attributes. Then if I wanted to, I can select the output layer, which is vegetation near roads. And then I can click um, the vegetation types, which uh, appears as this um, doohickey value. And I can just go to equals and get unique values. Um, get unique values just means that it finds all of the available data within this column or field. So uh, this value, hollow 95, um, just means vegetation types. So and uh, each one of these values, um, 1100, 100, 200, 300, uh, 12,000, blah, blah, blah. Each one of these is a different type of vegetation under the vegetation types um, field name or column name. You can think of it that way. So I'm just going to go ahead and select one uh, specific type. So if I click on this one right here, I'll double click it. Uh, so now I've selected uh, only the vegetation type, which has this value. Let's just say it's daisies um, for sake of argument. Uh, then you want to want to be doing uh, before you go ahead and run this to find all the daisies in those buffer zones. Um, you just want to click on verify right here. So this expression was successfully verified. What this means is that um, it'll check to make sure that this makes sense to the computer. Um, this, in case you want to know, is uh, SQL uh, basically. So it's um, select this field where value equals this number. This number is a vegetation type, daisy, and this is a field. So find all daisies from the uh, vegetation types field for the layer, uh, the buffers, the buffer layer. So that's been verified. We can just go ahead and click apply. And just like that, we've selected all our locations where daisies appear in the buffer layers, the buffer layer. <laughs> okay. Great, okay, and if we wanted to clear this, um, we'll be doing some work with this later, but if we wanted to clear this, we can just go up to selection again, and we just go to clear selected features. Bam. Okay, guys, uh, hold on to the series because it's gonna get a lot more important doing some advanced GIS to help you guys using ArcMap as a program.